too, it goes without saying, a hugely frustrating for you and everyone associated with the Oval Town. Yeah, I think, listen, uh, for us to be in such a commanding position in the first half again, um, I mean, there was, must have been four or five scrambles across the six-yard box and we just don't seem to put it in. And then we, um, then we start the second half and then a moment of madness for first the penalty. And then second of all, we, um, we put on information to say that the person that gives the penalty away, get away from it as far as possible, get on the edge of the box. The information somehow gets lost in translation when it goes onto the pitch and then we can see the goal two minutes later. So, and the confidence just dwindled out of the players. For us, it's, um, it's probably the end of what we've been trying to do. And now it's just a thing of pride, perseverance. And I told them players in that room now that they'll be fighting for their futures, whether it be here or elsewhere. And um, listen, it wasn't just on tonight. It wasn't just on Saturday, which is two disappointing games. It's been the course of the whole season. And um, I said in that changing room, we all have to take everyone that's been part of this football club over the last season has got to take responsibility for what's happened and we've just gone out with a whimper even even there at the end you know it seems that we get James Hayter scores a fantastic goal and then we're offside you know so everything that we've been working on everything we've been doing we changed the mentality in a losers and a losing squad for a short period of time but then they revert back to tight and then they go back into their old ways and this, this season just petered out so it's not been good enough for the whole 30 something games we've played so far and now it's just making sure that the players stay professional and fight for them supporters that travelled over there because you know they're right to be disappointed but they're still quite jovial and they was a, at least they've had a good time as in a way of sticking together and I said to the players if you stuck together the way the supporters have stuck together we'd probably be in a better position now and um, bitterly disappointed but for all the hard work that everybody's put in uh, to try and keep this club afloat and to try and keep this club competing. Um, I'm just really sorry for, especially the, the owners and the chairman, because they put so much into it this season and they invested a hell of a lot of money, which they think, and we've just come up short. And it's um, for someone that's been there, been here and been involved in this football club for 16 years, to see a losing environment two seasons on the spin that's been the hardest thing to take because when I first turned up at this club we was a real ambitious non-league team we've reached the heights of where we've reached and now to to go backwards so fast you can see that that's happened to a lot of other clubs now the club's got to regroup refocus and see where they go from here so you say the end with eight games left you acknowledge now there's too much to do and it'll be league two next season we've got to show playoff form and we're not showing that so we've got to show promotion form at the moment now We've got to focus on our performances, not worry about the pressure of getting points because they can't handle that. Um, we said it would have been such a real achievement tonight. And we said it at half time, if we go and win this game, we go above them, it'd be such a psychological boost for our supporters, never mind anybody else. But then when they come out and they, the goals you gift an opposition team and when you're down there and you can say that the luck's not going for you, but for me, with the chances we've missed and with the goals that we keep giving away, it's not because they're not trying, it's because they're not good enough. And that's the, and that's the thing that they've got to take on the chin. And what we've got to take on the chin as well, because you know there's been a lot of decisions made on players, bringing them in and giving them the opportunity, and they've not handled that well enough. So you referred to the two goals, Terry. What can you do for Nathan Smith? Is it a case of taking him out of the firing line? Because quite clearly, on Saturday, he was at fault, and you just said he was at fault for the two goals tonight. Yeah, I mean, we've got to reassess, but you know, when you look round, it's we put Liam Davis in, and uh, he lasted 50 minutes, and then he was been out injured for, for another two and a half weeks on the back of that, which was when he first came into the club, was supposed to be our number one left back, and um, Nathan Smith was supposed to be the backup. And if you look at the games to which each player's played, one's played a hell of a, or had to play a hell of a lot of games, and the other one hasn't. And that's what you get when, you know, I'm not blaming stuff on injuries and that, but when you look back on probably people's careers, they've, they've been injured more than they've been fit. So League Two, I mean, the club's now got to really plan for that and look at what they're going to do, because, I mean, that's going to be important now to adjust to, to, to that level, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, listen, we've got to concentrate on the eight games first, but there's, got to, there's going to be a lot of work that's got to go behind the scenes. The club are going to be looking to go in a, maybe a different direction to what they've done in the past. And, um, you know, I think the club's 
and the chairman's working behind the scenes on, on what he's got to do to move the club forward and it could be an exciting time for the future and um, you know whether I'm part of that or anyone that's part of that in that changing room it will be um, it'll be up to the people upstairs but for me to be the one that's here at the moment having to do the talking bitterly disappointed um, we've tried to give it a go we did in recent weeks but then sort of gone reverted back to type and then they've come up short and with the games that we've got left now we've got to win nearly all of them <laughs> to get to where we need to get to do you want to and do you think you can be the man to lead the Yeovil Town Revival listen I've got I've got to speak to the um, I've got to speak to everybody be up there but I think the decision which was going to be made isn't going to be around the corner I don't think I think it'll be in the summer um, the supporters are hurting right now and I can understand that but they've been hurting for the last two and a half months and they've been voicing their opinions and, and they've been rightly to do so so we need to know where what uh, direction the club's going for we're going to keep fighting um, because we've got to make sure now that the performances are there for the supporters so that they know that the club's still giving it not so much giving it a go but the, the players are trying to go out there and perform because for 45 minutes out there tonight they performed really well the players but then to give the two goals away and then to capitulate like that they didn't perform in the second half sort of huffed and puffed and you know that was two teams that was supposed to be fighting for their lives and it was one of the slowest methodical games I, I think I'd watched so you know the, I think players on both sides are a little bit spent and mentally the players are in there are, are shot to pieces from what's happened in previous months.